Um, well, my nails are gone. And then one of the really has his thumb in the head. I don't know what that is. Corals are a part of a group of small aquatic animals called cnidarians. Cnidarians include corals, sea anemone, hydroids, and jellyfish. They are made up of tiny organisms living together in a colony. Each individual organism is called a polyp. polyp a polyp is a small marine animal. Some coral polyps are as small and others can be large, but the majority of them are small. Corals reproduce when an egg wanders and lands on a flat surface and on a coral most, most of the time, and then it eventually blossoms kind of like a flower, and it grows there for thousands of years. Corals form when free-swimming larvae attach to submerged rocks or other hard surfaces along the edges of islands or continents. As the coral grows and expands, reef take on Reefs take on the three major characteristic structure, structures, fringing, barrier, or atoll. These are the different types of reefs. The development and the structure of a coral is like how a coral develops and forms and grows into its funky shape. The skeleton shapes. of a coral are stony and white. They are the platform for other corals to live on top of. The tentacles of corals contain micro microscopic cells that are pneumatis. Those pneumatis are the sting and they also help capture small little fish for the corals to eat. The body structure of a coral polyp is simple. It is shaped like a tube, and the tube is close at one end, where the polyp attaches to its growing surface, and at the under other end, the mouth, which is used for both taking in food and excreting waste. The tentacles surround the mouth, gathering food, and are usually found in multiples of six or eight. The body tissue of the polyps are extremely simple, with only two cell layers, the outer epidermis, which has direct contact with water, and the inner gastrodermis. So, hard coral is this really tough coral that you can like slam down and beat up. Soft corals are really nice and squishy. Actually, hard corals are reef building corals and contain zoanthelae most of the time. And soft corals do not build reefs because of their because they do not have hard skeletons. And they do not live in shallow water, so they are able to live in greater depths and rely on plankton. Corals. Let's see. Uh, animal species numero uno, <laughs> numero dos y tres. They're really colorful and they have lots of fish in them and they and they live at the bottom of the ocean. Thousands of communities all over the world also depend on coral reefs for food, protection, and jobs. Coral reefs are an important food source for people who n live near reefs and also nurseries are vital to the world's fisheries. Many of comp of the compounds now being used in human medicines include some of the that treat cancer are found on the coral reefs. 
Organisms that can be found on the branches of the coral reefs are fish, crustaceans, starfish, brittle stars, sea pens, sea urchins, and squid. The octopus is one of the most phenomenal predators. It can rapidly change its color in response to the background and has sharp eyesight. One of the most well-known symbiotic relationships in the marine world is between the anemone and the clownfish. Both the fish and the anemone are believed to benefit from the relationship. The fish are protected from the stinging cells and pneumatoses in the anemone's tentacles. The anemone feeds on the waste products from the fish. Another well-known symbiotic relationship is between the goby fish and the shrimp. The uh, shrimp makes a safety burial for the goby fish and puts it on one of its antenna on the goby fish to keep on contact with it. The goby looks out for predators and if it sights any, it will warn the shrimp and they will hide in the burrow.